Hello, I'm Dr. Sangeeta Petya. I work with Regional Institute of Education, Bhopal, which is a constituent unit of National Council of Educational Research and Training, that is NCRT. NCERT, an autonomous body under the Ministry of Human Resource Development under Government of India. I teach history to the undergraduates of integrated BA B. Ed. courses and also monitor pre-service teacher training programs. Besides, the organization's mandate is also training the in-service teachers in pedagogy and content. So we also develop content and conduct teacher training programs for teachers in India. We also conduct research related to education-related issues, which helps us in assessing the interventions required and thereby help in planning and implementing the same. Global citizenship education primarily focuses on dimensions such as respect for multiculturalism, establishment of social justice, gender equality, education for peace, human rights and sustainable development. It lays emphasis on transformative pedagogies for realizing the cognitive, socio-emotional and behavioral domains of learning. It lays a lot of emphasis on building of 21st century skills in the learners such as teamwork, learning to live together, work together, communication skills, critical thinking and problem solving to name a few. So, global citizenship to me is all about unity of existence of humankind. It's about interconnectedness and interdependence to address the challenges that the world is facing. It's about oneness of purpose of making the world safe, peaceful and happy for each individual to live and realize their potential, dreams, aspirations and hopes. Education can be a great leveler. It also leads to empowerment and emancipation. It is the biggest hope for the world for transforming the lives of the people. Young minds are highly impressionable and can be shaped in a desired manner. Young children need to understand and critically think about local, national and global issues. They need to understand how these issues in one part of the world affects and has implications for all people across the world. For example, the rising water table as a result of global warming for which all nations of the world are responsible will have serious manifestations for all, more particularly for island nations and people inhabiting the coastal regions. Having the understanding of the issues, they must have socio-emotional sensitivity of sharing responsibility of meeting this challenging and alarming situation of global warming. Having been sensitized about the challenge, they need to take action at local levels in whatever ways they can, maybe taking the issues to the local community and motivating them to take action and also setting example through walking the talk by taking small but meaningful steps like walking small distances and therefore conserving petrol and checking air pollution. I had conducted several training workshops on social science pedagogy using ICT and constructivist pedagogy wherein education for peace, respect for multiculturalism, social justice and human rights were embedded in the workshops. However, my participation in 17th Asia-Pacific training workshop on global citizenship education and education for international understanding gave me the drive for more concerted efforts in this direction. Reaching sizable number through training workshops was not possible. Hence, it was felt that in order to reach out a sizable number in a short span, it would be a workable idea to come up with a handbook on global citizenship education. An interactive handbook which will do the talking for the teachers and handhold them extensively for taking GSET into their classes. Hence, the development of the handbook. The handbook is expected to expand the understanding and knowledge of key concepts and principles of global citizenship education. It has been divided into three parts. The first part talks about the concept of citizenship, its historical development 
and the need for building an attitude of moving from the confines of being citizens of a nation to being citizens of the world. It discusses the principles and values enshrined in the national curriculum framework which echoes a spirit of global citizenship education. It also discusses the conceptual dimensions and learning objectives of global citizenship education along with pedagogical principles. Self-assessment activities to assess the understanding of the concept of citizenship have also been provided in this part. Finally, for those who would like to learn more and be a part of being facilitators for promotion of GSET, certain self-learning resources and platforms have also been suggested. The second part discusses at length the various themes under GSET, that is sustainable development, multiculturalism, gender equality, education for promoting a culture of peace, education for human rights and inclusive education. Drawing examples from local contexts as well as connecting it in terms of global implications. It is expected to deepen the understanding of facilitators on these issues so that the facilitators are in part to take up these issues in class. In the third part, the handbook has scanned the GSET components embedded in the social science textbooks at upper primary level. For example, when a lesson in history talks about role and importance of coins, inscriptions, architecture and textual records in the construction of history, respect for tangible and intangible heritage is the identifiable GSET component. Further, the suggested activities include recreating primary sources, coins through clay molding, designing a rock pillar edict and writing a message that they would like to give to the world for peace and solidarity. The expected GSET competency through the above activity is to develop appreciation and respect for heritage as also a commitment for taking action for the conservation of tangible and intangible heritage as well as sensitizing them about the urgent need of building a peaceful world. Similarly, another lesson talks about migration and advent of new technology. In this lesson, understanding the role of interdependence and mutual learning through social, political and cultural exchanges may be seen as an existing GSET component. Transformative pedagogies such as research, critical thinking and analysis may be used and a discussion on different questions may be taken up. These could be, why do people migrate within a country to different places and outside country? Why do people become refugees? Can we list the countries of origin of refugees such as Syria and Afghanistan? What problems do refugees face and how can it be resolved? The possible GSET competency of building empathy and sensitivity towards nations and people facing internal challenges as a result of migration and to help them in reconstruction may be achieved through such processes. The pedagogical processes such as listed above have been given in detail to accomplish the GSET learning outcomes and GSET competencies. Emphasis has been laid on incorporating critical thinking by encouraging learners to look at their own experiences and link them to local, national and global happenings. Experiential learning can bring a transformation in their behaviour. It encourages the learners to step out of the classroom, to ask questions and to seek responses to various situations from the community in order to better understand the world around them. The suggested pedagogical processes are expected to encourage learners to look beyond the textbook and collect information from multiple sources such as books in the library, newspapers and internet as well as through fieldwork. Finally, some exemplar lesson plans drawn from the NCRT social science textbooks, history, geography, social and political life from classes 6 to 8 have been provided. Besides, GSET is not the domain of social science teachers only, but can be realized through various other disciplines as well. Hence, exemplary lesson plans from various disciplines such as math, science, 
Hindi and English language have also been provided for embedding GSET in the teaching learning of these disciplines. The lesson plans are suggestive, the effective realization of cognitive, social, emotional and behavioral learning depends on the ingenuity of the teachers in identifying the learning potential of an issue and to seize the teachable moment. Finally, a checklist has been provided that can be used by the teachers to create lesson plans that build global citizenship in learners. The checklist is divided into eight categories that in our understanding can contribute to building the three components of global citizenship, cognitive, behavioral and socio-emotional learning. For example, teachers while planning their lessons must ensure that at least one resource that captures different communities and encourages learners to wonder and inquire more about them is being incorporated in the lesson or at least one resource on or an activity that cognitively and emotionally invokes a sense of responsibility and willingness to act towards a local global issue has been incorporated within the lesson plan. Unfortunately, the way most disciplines and particularly social sciences are taught in the classes is largely leading to rote memorization and reproducing for obtaining good marks in the exams. There's very little conceptual understanding. Besides, the Indian educational system has always been a very teacher-dominated one, with largely autocratic teachers. The element of fear and punishment is still largely predominant. Now, the times have changed, spare the rod and spoil the child axiom does not work. It has been proved that learning can take place in a fear-free environment. Classes need to be joyous and schools a happy place for the learners. Furthermore, children come to the school with a lot of experiences. They also have a lot of access to information and therefore are well informed. This must be tapped and built upon for learning to happen. For making learning student-centric, we need to have democratic classes where student voices are heard and respected. All this can be realized only through transformative education. Transformative pedagogies such as group discussions, role plays, integration of art such as music and theater, Use of such pedagogies also provides spaces for soft skill training to the learners. For example, through a group discussion, children learn to express their opinion and also to listen to and respect others' point of view. So, values such as empathy and kindness are formed. Communication skills, critical thinking also happen in the process. We can see increasing cases of aggression as in fighting, bullying, exchange of verbal abuses. All this indicates that we need to relook at the entire processes of teaching learning. Teachers also need to transform and need to be facilitators. They need to observe the children closely when involving them in alternate pedagogies and provide handholding for helping children to improve upon the areas where they need to. For example, let's go back to the example of group discussion. The teacher in the role of a facilitator needs to appreciate children when they effectively articulate and express their opinion so that they may build up further on their strengths. At the same time, if the teacher observes that the child is getting involved in heated arguments, disrespecting others' viewpoint, being sarcastic, they can counsel the child and guide towards an appropriate behavior. They must also keep track of how the child behaves in future and whether or not the desired change in behavior is taking place. You see, the main objective of transformative pedagogy is to see that there is learning not only in the cognitive but socio-emotional and behavioral domain as well. All this is not happening. Learning is mark-centered and therefore rote memorization is generally practiced. All this needs to be changed through transformative pedagogies. 
assessment needs to be transformed where assessment as learning, of learning and for learning takes place. All domains of learning need to be assessed and application and understanding based formative and summative assessment along with knowledge based assessment needs to be done. All this is only possible through transformative pedagogies. Teachers need to keep in mind the objectives and role of education, that is, humane citizens equipped with 21st century skills. The processes of teaching learning need to be fundamentally transformed. Passionate and committed teachers with pedagogy of love can address the cognitive, socio-emotional and behavioral domains of learning and bring about the desired attitudinal and behavioral change in the learners. GSET is very well embedded in the Indian ethos and culture. Our indigenous philosophies have always taught us that we are all interconnected and interdependent in this world. Vasudev Kutumbakam that is, the world is one family, as it is said in Sanskrit. Indian culture believes in the interconnectedness and interdependent nature of life on Mother Earth. The prayer, Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Bhavantu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Ma Kaschit Dukh Bhag Bhavet, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, is a universal prayer for the entire humankind rising above the caste, creed, color, religion, race or nationality. It means that may all become happy, may all be free from illness, may all see what is auspicious, may no one suffer. Om peace, peace, peace. It is a strong message for respect for diversity, multiculturalism and strongly professes peace. There's another axiom which says, Yatra naryastu pujyante ramante tatra devta meaning gods dwell where women are worshipped, meaning respected, their opinion counted and treated with love and care. Worshipping rivers, even calling them mother, ma, Ganga Maya, Narmada Maya, which means mother Narmada, as it nourishes and sustains all forms of life. Worshipping animals as vehicle of one god or the other, cow, snakes, Worshipping trees, the banyan, avla, neem, even herbs like tulsi to the extent that in Hindu religion one tree is considered to be equal to hundred suns. All this points towards the basic Indian philosophy of sustained sustenance. Indian culture has been based on ahinsa, non-killing of animals, against greed and materialism. Shiti jal pava gagan samira panch rachit ati adham sharira it means that the body is made of five elements and will subsequently get dissolved in the same. Respecting the five elements which constitutes us, illustrating oneness with nature. Gita is strongly against amassing, therefore greed, materialism and consumerism when it says that what did you bring that you will take back. Therefore processing judicious use of resources. Atithi Devo Bhava treating all guests who visit you as God. But now, these cultural practices are slowly being treated as thing of the past, no more to be practiced in an increasingly individualistic and consumerism-based world. So these ancient values need to be revisited and relearned and therefore the need for GSET. The Constitution of India declares India to be socialist, secular, democratic republic and to secure for all citizens justice, liberty, equality and fraternity. The government draws guidance from the Constitution of India and therefore has come up with National Curriculum Framework 2005. The document clearly states the educational aims, commitment to democracy and the values of equality justice and freedom, concern for others' well-being, secularism, respect for human dignity and rights, and sustainable development. The curriculum and the textbooks have therefore been designed keeping the above aims of education in mind. 
Further, in the Indian multicultural society, we have diversity in the geography of the land, in religion, culture, and so many other socio-cultural practices. Having been under colonial subjugation and having been bled white for almost two centuries, we are still struggling with poverty and other development-related issues. Immense economic development has taken place, but it has in turn brought in income inequalities, which has further resulted in marginalization of large number of communities with reference to access to opportunities of growth and development. 276 million people live below the poverty line, deprived of quality food and basic needs, thus depriving a large section of people with social justice. Development has also brought in issues like pollution of air, water and soil, deforestation, lowering of water tables and similar other issues. All these issues are a part of the curriculum which is imparted to the learners. The textbooks that have been designed discuss these issues at length. The teachers in the role of the facilitators need to be effectively transacting these in the classes. Let's take an example from a history lesson plan that we have suggested in the handbook. There is a chapter in history in grade 7 entitled 18th century political formations and it discusses impact of wars, rise of local powers and even connects to similar events happening around the world at the same time that is the French Revolution. Here ideas of liberty, equality and fraternity, citizenship, nation state and democratic rights can be called the entry point of GSET. Discussion on how Aurangzeb's continuous wars led to exhausting of resources and weakening of Mughals. Interconnecting with how massive resources are spent by nations on wars today and how otherwise they can help in growth of primary needs across the world, providing medical care, balanced diet and education to all those who are deprived thus sensitizing the learners about respect for human rights and social justice for all. Teachers need to avoid arousing hatred in the students against the oppressors, invaders and villains. Rather, broaden the vision to understand the socio-economic and political conditions that lead to the emergence of such personalities. Discuss two lessons we can learn from this human experience. Explore the nature of human violence and its limitations. The Indian freedom struggle under Mahatma Gandhi is a living example for raising voice against injustice and oppression through truth and non-violence. History teachers can form a heritage club and sensitize learners to work for conservation and protection of tangible and intangible heritage. Similarly, GSET can be introduced in science. While teaching sound, attention of learners may be drawn towards the difference between sound and noise and the factors that lead to noise pollution. They may then be encouraged to share their inconveniences due to noise pollution, their role in curbing the same, and how noise pollution leads to harmful effects on the health and behavior in the form of hypertension, high stress levels, tinnitus, hearing loss, sleep disturbances and other harmful effects, all of which also leads to intolerance, irritation and therefore poor interpersonal relations leading to conflicts and violence thereby disturbing peace and harmony. Noise pollution by humans can alter the acoustic environment of marine and terrestrial habitats. It can affect an animal's ability to hear or make it difficult for it to find food, locate mates and avoid predators. It can also impair its ability to navigate, communicate, reproduce and participate in normal behaviors. Learners can be sensitized on the rights of animals to coexist on the planet and the duty of human beings to protect their natural habitat. Similarly, GSET can be easily embedded in languages and math. It all depends upon the ingenuity and passion of the teacher.
The biggest challenge that I think we are facing is giving way from being an autocratic teacher to being democratic teacher. Transforming classes into student-centric classes where children's voices are heard and respected. Where bookish knowledge is connected to the outside real world. Using transformative pedagogies where processes are given a prominent place rather than product and where realization of all the three domains of learning are emphasized upon along with 21st century skills. There's a lot of need to unlearn and relearn. While vetting the handbook, teachers from different types of schools in India from different disciplines were invited. Science and math teachers at the outset were pondering as to what their subjects had to do with GSET at all. And it was a challenge to explain and convince them. However, the silver lining is that at the end of the workshop, they could easily come up with GSET lesson plans themselves. So the challenge is training and orienting the teachers effectively. Further, teachers first need to be themselves humane and aspiring to be global citizens. Only then can they teach objectively. For example, GSET does not negate national citizenship and even if the concept of national citizenship might be a contested concept for some ethnic minority groups, in this age of global problems, we need to think and act as global citizens. In order to actually believe in this concept and act accordingly, the trained teachers first need to unlearn what they learn about citizenship and learn again about citizenship rights and duties in the age of global challenges and sustainable development goals. Similarly, to teach gender equality, teachers themselves need to be free from any kind of biases. There was a math problem based on fractions where the mother gives one-third chapati to the daughter and two-third to the son. The question is, why this differentiation? See, such math problems are also formed drawing from what is commonly practiced in the societies. Such problems from math books can be replaced with similar others on the same concept. Like, if one-third plants planted are mangoes and two-third oranges, how many of each types have been planted? The question is, can teachers see gender bias in such problems? The biggest challenge I feel, particularly in government schools, is lack of passionate and committed teachers who are ready to learn, to grow and to enrich themselves and thereby their learners. This attitudinal change, I believe, is the toughest. But I also believe with effective training, hand-holding, this can be achieved. So lack of time-to-time -time orientation and training is a major drawback. With right training, guidance, appreciation and motivation, teachers can effectively embed GSET in the teaching learning process. I strongly believe that in GSET lie all solutions to global challenges that we are facing. To all who are passionately working in this endeavor, I bow. And to the others, I call upon to join hands together in whatever smallest way we can. As in closing an open tap on the roadside or walking small distances rather than driving. Thereby making this world a safer, greener and happier place to live in. Thank you so much.